Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to our series on the Dawah workshop. Let's continue with the fascinating discussion. I have a small exercise for you now. What I want you to do is to write down, and everyone at home can do this as well, who's watching, you can write down the five top things that you would tell a non-Muslim about Islam. So if you're going to talk to a non-Muslim, what would be the five most important things you would tell them about Islam? So you can write that down now, inshallah. I'll give you one minute. Okay, everyone, you ready? Yeah? Fantastic. Okay, I'm going to come down now and let's see. So who's going to uh, tell me the five top things, inshallah? Okay. So let's start with you, Ahmed. What have you got? Now, just remember to speak slowly like this so that I can understand. Not like that, like a robot. Okay, but just speak nice and slowly. Because this is important in terms of communication. So what are the five top things you've got, Ahmed? First of all, I'll uh, speak to him about the oneness of God. Okay. The most merciful. Excellent. And secondly, I'll tell him about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Excellent. That he was sent for the complete humankind and not only for the Muslims. Good. And third, Quran is the last revelation sent by God, not only for Muslims, for complete humankind, as well as for you. Excellent. And fourth, I would like to invite him to Islam and ask him to recite the Kalima. And I'll tell him that inshallah, if you accept Islam, you'll be successful and for sure paradise is yours Excellent. in the next life. Okay. And last, I'll tell him that Allah can forgive any sin if he wills, but shirk he will never forgive. So you need to think on that. Excellent. Very good. I like that a lot, Ahmed. Okay, pass it to Rizwan over there. First of all, I'd like to explain to him the meaning of Islam. The second thing would be Tawheed. Okay, and the third thing would be the Rasala of all the Prophets. Fourth would be the Islam being the natural deen, the deen al fitra of a human. And the fifth would be uh, Islam being the only solution to the problems of the humanity, the laws and ethics. Okay, you said Tawheed. How would you explain Tawheed? What? I would explain that uh, all the religions that came before taught us that there is only one God. Well, that's the original teaching of all religions. Of I, all religions. I like that a lot. The idea that the original teaching of all religions was the oneness of Allah and then it became corrupted. That's very nice. Okay, Muhammad Amir. Sorry, I'm going to miss you, brother. We're going to Muhammad Amir. What have you got for us, brother? Yes, first of all, I will introduce him about the creation and the creator. And that goes to Tawhid. And okay. number two, I will introduce him about the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi okay. wasallam. And we'll discuss uh, some other religious scriptures like Bible and Vedas uh, about what they say about the life of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Brother, you need to talk a little bit more slowly. You're talking too fast, and your words are coming too fast. So, yeah, go on. And number three, uh, I will introduce him Quran as the constitution of life. Okay, that's and nice. Number four. I will ask him a question. What's your concept about Akhirah, the day okay. uh, hereafter? And at last, I would like to remove uh, some of his misconceptions. Okay. And at last, I will come to the point I would like to invite to him Islam. Okay, fine. Okay, so who have we got over here? Had their hand up. Okay, I think um, Shafiq had his hand up over there. So what have you got for us, Shafiq? The first and the foremost thing, which I will call him is about Tawheed only. Okay. But I will ask him according to you, what is the definition of the God? So you're going to ask him, what yeah. do you... What, according uh, to okay, you, the uh, fine. definition of the God. So I can get an idea. Okay, good. Because even Next the, one. Good. Okay, the second thing I will tell him regarding the Quran, the glorious Quran, uh, why it is important. 
Why is the Quran important? Good. Okay, what's the next thing? The thing I will tell him about Islam, why Islam is different from other religions. Okay. For example, even every religion teach us good. Yes. To do good deeds and all this. Why? But That's why? very nice. You see, every religion teaches you about good. So this is a big question people have. Why is Islam different? Excellent. Yes. Okay, and I will come uh, to my fourth question that I will ask him about the hereafter. Okay. What you are going to, what yeah, is your okay. concept about hereafter? Good. Next. When you tell him about the day of judgment. Day of judgment. Where, where is the true justice will be carried out. Excellent. Good. Okay. Let's pass it to uh, Sadiq. What have you got for us? Yes. Uh, I'll ask from the purpose. Purpose of life. The purpose of life. Good. So like, is life uh, just a game? Or is or life just a, a game? Or is there any purpose of life? Is there a purpose? Okay. Good. Uh -huh. so it's, and yes. the second point. I'll ask about the Tawheed. I'll explain, explain to him about, about the Tawheed yes. and Risala and Akhirat. Okay. The three points. That's three things. Tawheed, Risala and Akhirat. So you've got four now. Yes. One more. And the last and the final, your salvation lies only in Islam. The salvation only lies in Islam. Okay. So, mashallah, so far, pretty much the same type of things. Excellent. So, Salim, what have you got for us, inshallah? They have covered almost everything what I've written That's is fine. Tawheed. You can say, well, okay, Tawheed, how will you approach the subject of Tawheed? Because we have a different approach. So Rizwan, his approach was from the angle, it's the original belief of all religions, then they were corrupted. So uh, what's your approach? The same or a different approach to explain Tawheed? Oneness of Allah, that the creator is different from the creation. Okay, So good. the attributes are different. So, uh, similar to what uh, Muhammad Amir mentioned similarly, the difference between the creation and the creator. Excellent. Then I'll talk about the last message from yes. the creator, that is the Quran. Yes. And then the last prophet, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the resurrection. Okay. Akhirat, and the end, uh, the judgment day, uh, where you will be judged for your good and bad deeds. Okay. That's fantastic. Now, Brothers and brothers and sisters listening at home or wherever you may be, it may be a bit disappointing because a lot of what you're going to learn in this course is not new to you at all. Now you may be a bit disappointed because maybe you're hoping to learn something very new and exciting. But actually from another angle, this is also very exciting. The fact is that most of you don't actually really need to learn a lot in order to know how to give da'wah. Because we've seen from the brothers here that every single one of you, mashaAllah, I believe has mentioned the most important and essential ingredients for how to give da'wah. If we can talk about these things, alhamdulillah, our da'wah inshallah ta'ala is going to be very, very successful. So this is the beautiful thing about this course is that it's not really about teaching you something new. What's it about? It's organizing the information that most of you already have and giving you a system through which you can deliver that information most effectively. Okay, so Alhamdulillah, we've had the basic ingredients. Most of you have mentioned a tawheed. You've mentioned prophethood, the Quran, the Akhirah. What is Islam? What does it mean? MashaAllah, you've included within that an invitation mentioning of the paradise, the hellfire. And has anyone got anything else they would like to mention? Yes. Brother Asr. Asher. Asher. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, I think most of the points have been covered. So I'm just saying those points which have not been covered. Okay. So it is jihad. I would love to, you know, explain him jihad mood. That was the real meaning of jihad. Okay. That's shown in a TV that it's terrorism. It's okay. not jihad. Okay, we get the idea. So, okay, I think that, to be fair, Muhammad Amir did say, I would like to clarify some misconceptions. So this is a particular thing now that you want to discuss with the non-Muslim. Okay, go on. That's fine. And I think it's about the uh, Prophet Isa. Okay. I presume that's if you're talking to a Christian. You know, Many if you're talking to a Hindu, would you need many to... Hindus and Christians, you know, yes. had that misconception that Jesus is the son of God. Okay. 
So, so you like to explain about Jesus specifically about Jesus being the Son of God. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. So that's part of Tawheed, but you're saying now there's a very specific dimension there that you would like to discuss. Okay, that's fantastic. Has anyone got anything else? Uh, not the brothers who have put their hands up before. So yes, go ahead. Your name, brother? Abu Bakr. Yes. Yes, brother. Inshallah, I will explain him about the Tawheed, Risala, and Akhirah. Was it? You explain about, okay, Tawheed, Akhirah, Risala as well. But something new. Yes. And my approach will be uh, through the true concept of God, not what he uh, keeps in mind. And uh, the new thing I will discuss him about the Day of Judgment, why there is uh, no deed in the world we can say to be wrong if there is no Day of Judgment and the justice for all. And lastly, I will discuss okay. about the Islam and human rights. Islam and okay. human Islam rights, and women's human rights, right. yeah. women's rights, animal rights, etc. Okay, Abu Bakr, fine. Again, obviously, I think you want to try and clarify some misconceptions people may have about Islam. That's interesting. The concept of justice as well, it's very interesting that uh, I know at least of one atheist who converted to Islam and this was a very powerful thing for him. He really wanted there to be a day of judgment because he couldn't understand how many bad people there were in the world who got away with the evil. So although he didn't believe in God, he liked the idea that there was a day of judgment. So that can appeal to a lot of people. Yes. Who else had their hands up? Okay, Rahib, tell us what you have, inshallah, something new? I would try to find out if he has some problem and then give him the solution which lies in Islam. So you mean like a personal problem that he has in his life? Okay, that's very nice because remember we discussed previously about the importance of empathy. And what did we say about listening? About a minute of listening is better than you know, a year or a hundred years or however long, it doesn't matter. But the point is, listening is better than talking. This also shows another thing that we've mentioned, fikr, which is concern. So this is very interesting by way of being able to open up a discussion with a person and very quickly to build a strong connection with that person by finding out do they have problems in their lives and maybe the solution for those problems will lie in Islam. Alhamdulillah. That's very good. So, you have something else as well you wanted to say? Good. Then I would tell him some of the beautiful hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, okay. which speaks on good manners and etiquettes and virtues. Okay, mashallah. So, this is a very different approach. And it's not a bad approach necessarily. As most people, as we said already, buy because of emotion. A lot of people, they're persuaded by emotion and then afterwards they begin to rationalize why they made this decision. So a lot of people don't actually make a decision based on reason. They make the emotional decision and then afterwards they try and explain to themselves why I did that and try and make sense of it. So alhamdulillah, that's not a problem. It's not a problem to use that type of method as well, alhamdulillah. Okay, okay, Mujahid, what have you got? Something different? One point I will exclaim him, the uh, importance of this life. The importance of? This life. This life. Today's humanity, they have forgotten the importance of this life. They are just uh, taking it as amusement and play. Okay. So I will... So you mean the purpose of life? Yeah. Okay, so this is similar to what Sadiq mentioned. What is the purpose of life? Is life just a game? So, fine, we had that already. So, alhamdulillah, it's your idea. You, this is a very powerful thing for many people as well. What is the purpose of life? What is the reason for our existence? So, these are ways that Rahib mentioned and Mujahid and Sadiq mentioned. These are very powerful ways to introduce and to open up a conversation. And that's obviously one of the most challenging things. But we will be talking about that, inshallah, later, how to begin a conversation. So we're going to finish for now, inshallah, and we'll continue in the next session, inshallah. Osama 
El Shami. How can we get our children ready for the month of Ramadan? Sharing the stories of what the Muslims have been through in the past, in particular the first generation. Nazir Irfan Al Mujahid. Make this Ramadan, this Ramadan very special to them. Your taqwa, your righteousness, your goodness. I want you to tell me about your experiences from the very first Ramadan that you experienced as a new Muslim. The first Ramadan I experienced was amazing. Umar Debua. When I embraced Islam, it was like I was prepared, you know, Allah prepared me for something that I had no idea. It was an amazing experience. Beautiful. Beautiful. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to our program, The Straight program. Path. Build your character on the path of the Quran and Sunnah in The Straight Path. Every Wednesday and Saturday at 3 p.m. and repeat telecast at 1 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. In every job that you do, you want to be the best that you can be. To be the best that you can be, you have to follow the example of the best that ever were. When it comes to Dawah, there is no better example than the example of those men whom Allah chose to do the best of jobs. His noble prophets and messengers. Join me, Muhammad Tim Humble, as we study together the methodology of the prophets in Dawah. Rush to adopt the matchless qualities that make the procedure of Dawa extremely effective in the methodology of the prophets in Dawa every Tuesday at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. Saudi Arabia on Peace TV. Okay, brothers, salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa MashaAllah. Welcome back. Now, we have developed something that we call Go Rap. Doesn't mean I'm going to teach you all to become rappers now. No. Go Rap stands for something. Okay? It stands for, the G stands for God. Actually, it stands for the existence of God. That's the first thing. How do we know that there is a creator of this universe? That's the first thing. The O stands for oneness. But actually, not only oneness, the oneness and uniqueness of God. Not only is there one God, but very importantly, that God is unique and different from the creation. This is what you already said. Two of you already said that. Essential. Everything you said already, mashallah, will find more or less is going to be contained in this Gora. Then the next thing we want to do is to show them that we need revelation. We need guidance from God. So the R stands for revelation. Under this, we are showing that why do we need revelation? Why do we need God to give us guidance? This one unique God, why should God give us guidance? And how do we know that the Quran is that guidance from God? Yes? The A stands for An. So don't worry about that, it's just An. And the P stands for Prophethood. So this is to tell them something about Prophet Muhammad. And how can we know that he truly is what he claimed to be? A messenger of God. And then after that, we introduce them to the concept of Islam, a few details about Islam, and we invite them to take the shahada. So you could call it go raps with an S at the end, but we just call it, for the core bit, we call it go rap. Now, Go rap can be
very simple and it can be quite complex. I, by the way, use this method of da'wah most of the time. 90% of the time when I give da'wah, I use this method. So I'm not teaching you something that I don't use myself. I have almost totally, I say almost, totally given up using the Bible. I do not use the Bible anymore except maybe a few passages. And even that, I don't need to use it. So the beautiful thing about this method of da'wah is you don't need to spend years and years studying the Bible, studying the Vedas, studying the Buddhist scriptures, memorizing them. You don't need to do any of that. It's really based upon logic and reason. Alhamdulillah. You don't need to answer all these difficult questions. And I'm not teaching you something I don't do myself. I use this myself. I know the Bible. I've studied all of that. I've done all of that. I've been through all of that. I spent years standing up, quoting the Bible, this and that. The problem is even in England, most people don't even believe in the Bible. I remember once I was in Speaker's Corner listening to this brother. And subhanAllah, he was going through, you know, the who moved the stone? You know, Ahmed Didat's book, who moved the stone? Yeah, was there one angel? Were there two angels? Were there three angels? Were there one woman? Was it just Mary Magdalene? Or was it three women? Or was it all the women? So he's talking to this guy, going through all these contradictions, showing how this gospel contradicts that gospel. And the brother is talking for maybe 40 minutes. And this guy is going, hmm, and I'm just watching. At the end, this guy he's talking to says, that's very interesting, but I don't believe in the Bible. I mean, by the way, this is also a problem in the method of Dawah. You don't just talk to someone. <laughs> well, actually with Go Rap, you can talk to anyone. It doesn't matter. Even if they believe in God's existence, you can still use Go Rap with them, and it's still useful. Even if they are a Christian who believes in God, actually... People think Go Rap is designed for atheists. It's not. It's designed in order to talk to Christians just as much as atheists or anybody. Okay? But the point being here, many people don't even believe in the Bible. Even people, they call themselves Christians, they acknowledge the Bible has mistakes and inconsistencies. But they will say, no, the general theme is what is important, not the details. You see? So a lot of the normal dawah techniques that we've got used to you have to understand the response to these things has developed a lot so this is the outline of go rap my brothers so first we want to start before we actually go into discussing the existence of god the oneness of god revelation and prophethood what we want to do is understand the logic of this approach. Why do we use this approach? It's based upon the knowledge and the belief that God is the most wise and He is the all-knowing. Yes? So we all agree with that as Muslims. God is the most wise and He is the all-knowing. Human beings are not. Are we all wise and all-knowing? Or are we limited in our knowledge and understanding? Which one? We are? Limited. Okay. Therefore, human beings should submit to God. That's the logic. God is most wise. We are not. Therefore, we should submit to God. But in order to convince someone of this logic, we need to go back and we need to show them that there are very powerful and good arguments to show that God exists, that God is one that the Qur'an is from God and that Muhammad is the Prophet. Now I don't say prove. I said show them that there are very good arguments. Now, this may be very subtle to you. You may say, what's the difference between this and this? And actually, there is a big difference. Proof is very hard to establish. Just philosophically, yes. If I say to you, can you prove that you actually exist right now? Can you prove to me that we actually exist in this room? So you don't really exist. This is not real. This is just in your head. Like a dream. You know when you're having a dream? 
When you're having the dream, you think it's real. It's only when you wake up, you realize it wasn't real. So how do we know this is not a dream? Okay, we have some, you know, idea why, but can I prove it? Absolutely, definitely? No. I can't. So, all I'm trying to say is that proof is on a very high level. It's hard to prove something. And you don't need to prove it. It's not necessary. Because for human beings, don't demand most of the time absolute proof. We don't. That's it for now, brothers and sisters. Don't forget to join us next time for Dawa Workshop. مشفق متعطف لا ينتهي